Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to start holiday layouts and this is this um, this project recipe is the one for our holiday collection that just came out this year called Christmas Cheer. I think you're going to really like it. We're going to use the Nutcracker Punch that came out this year that a lot of people were kind of like, what am I going to use a Nutcracker Punch for? Well, the it's it is an integral integral part of the project recipe that was designed for this collection. So we're going to use that and um, and I'm also going to show you a couple of different versions of that or at least one other one that I have already put together. So um, it should be fun. Let's check out my workspace and get started. All right, so here is my workspace for today and this is the Christmas cheer project recipe. This is for the new Christmas collection that just came out this season of 2023 and um, you'll recognize this guy. This is the brand new Nutcracker Border Punch that just came out and we're going to use him today. It, this recipe, this project recipe actually goes together very quickly. It's fairly straightforward and simple. I do have a couple of little tips I will give you as I um, I did put this together previously with some friends so um, we discovered a, a couple of things that will help um, but it is pretty easy so let me just show you what I have here on my desktop. I have selected four papers. Two of them are going to be my base papers. These two that are the green with the little tiny trees on them and so I'm going to move my move those two papers up here. They also have the Christmas trees on the back but I just decided that probably the more tone on tone ish quality of this um, side would be better for the base so that's what I'm going to use up there. Um, in addition, I have the candy cane paper and this really unique um, sort of plaid paper. This has um, red and gold and green and blue and white, of course, as the background. And I don't know, it's just very striking and not not super in your face as sometimes multicolored pages can be. So I just thought that one would be a fun one to play with today. So we are going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to punch and cut. Um, one of the sheets is going to get two borders cut out of it. And um, those borders are going to be the nutcracker. So you kind of have to decide which design you want to have the nutcracker punched in. And whatever nutcracker, whatever design you want the nutcracker punched in, you are also going to have these wide strips that go horizontally across. That's made from the same paper that the nutcracker is punched in. You could, you know, flip it over and use the opposite side if you prefer, but just so that you realize that that is the same paper according to the cutting guide. Okay, so I um, decided that I really like this paper and I really want to use this for the bands that go across the horizontal piece. But I don't think I want my nutcrackers cut out of that. However, I could cut my nutcrackers from the red plaid on the back and I think they'll turn out really, really nice. So we're going to try that. And then I'm going to use the candy cane paper to create the mats and um, and much like they've got here, the strips that go down each side will also be candy cane paper. Um, anyway, I'll show you how it all comes together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and punch um, this plaid paper so that we can get our nutcrackers put to our, our nutcracker borders done. Okay, I for some reason always tend to go feed my paper in from the right to the left instead of from the left to the right. So if you like to go the other direction, by all means, go the other direction. Um, if you're not sure what I mean by that, you can always watch a tutorial or you can just pay attention to what I'm doing here. I start my paper using a mark on the front of the punch um, to line it up correctly and then each time that I punch that I then feed my paper through until the design matches the blue field on the wing of my punch. That's the way our CM border punches like this are designed and they actually work very very well um, for helping 
helping you get lined up and connected and perfect or nearly there every time. All right, so there are our nutcrackers. Ooh, I like them in red. That, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one more time so that I have two, because I need two rows of nutcrackers, one for each side of the layout. And you can take as much time as you need to punch these guys. So don't feel rushed. I'm just trying to get to the fun stuff. Okay, so we've got our two nut nutcracker rows. I'm just gonna leave them up there and move him out of the way and get rid of all of the punched confetti. You can do some fun things with the nutcracker and add papers to him to give him dimension and things like that. We're not going to do that today. That's not what this video is about, but there, I may do a video on that at some point. That would probably be helpful to, um, to some of us. It would be helpful, helpful for me to get it figured out, but also helpful for other people who are unsure how to embellish like that. All right, so I'm going to, so this is the edge that we, that I punched the nutcrackers off of. And I need to turn my paper so I can cut this piece right here. So that I have a nine and a quarter long piece and then I have a short piece that I can cut smaller. So I'm going to turn this so that I can measure it at nine and a half. So the wide, the 12 inches is horizontally ac across. I'm measuring a nine and a half on the side. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, then I'm going to take the nine and a half inch piece. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it at four and a half inches. And I'm actually going to turn mine the other direction just because I want to. Okay, so four and a half. There's one. And another one. This one should measure four and a half. And I'm, I just like to double check because sometimes paper sometimes is some a little, just a tiny bit wider. See that? And it needs to be. Okay, so I want both of those to be the same. So four and a half by nine and a half, then I'm left with this piece right here. This piece I am going to cut into one and three quarters. So I'm going to line that up on my one and three quarter line right here, or I could line it up on the very last mark of my grid on the right hand side also, that's one and three quarters. So either one of those would be appropriate and fine. This piece, the smaller piece that we cut off is extra, so just set it to the side. Then we're going to turn this horizontally and we're going to cut five pieces that are square. So we cut this piece at one and three quarters this direction. So we're going to cut five squares that are also one and three quarters. So we're going to go one and three quarters and one and three quarters. And one and three quarters. That's three and four. And this last one, you are going to measure to one and three quarters on this side over here. Hold the paper down and trim off that just that little bit that is not going to make because you want this to be square. So we don't need this little tiny piece that can go in the garbage. Okay. So, these five little squares are going to go over there. And I'm going to grab my next piece, which is going to be designer paper number two in the blue field. And we're going to cut, and remember this is non-directional paper. Actually, this one, this side is sort of directional, so we need to kind of maybe take a look at that. Um... Actually, the words are going all different directions. 
so maybe not so directional. We could probably cut this in any way we wanted and it would be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do, we need two two and a half inch strips. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up at two and a half, two and a half more. And four, four inches, and we're going to turn it and create two mats. So four by six, two at four by six. And those are going to go up there for mats. Then with this last bit, we are going to cut this. Um, you're going to need. There's no real way to conserve this paper, unfortunately. So we're going to do a cut at one and three quarters. Okay, so I've measured one and three quarters over here, and I'm going to cut all the way down. This piece is extra. We can use a use it for a border or something sometime. Then turn this, and you're going to cut five more, and you're going to once again have five more one and three quarter inch squares. So there's one. I love the optical illusion of layouts like this because if you didn't know that they were using squares you almost would think they were using triangles and oh my gosh that would be just so crazy to try to do this layout with triangles okay this piece is extra we're going to set that to the side as well and we are done with our trimmer so we're going to set that over there. We're not making any triangles today. We have five of these squares. We have five of these squares, okay? And we're going to use squares on top of a strip to create the diamond effect that we're looking here at here, okay? So let me show you what that's going to look like. I'm going to use, because my... Um, because I want my nutcrackers to, to stay in that pretty red plaid I'm going to make their back the background behind them um, this color this paper and this paper okay those two are going to go together to create the diamond pattern that's going to go behind and I'm going to use three and two on one side and three and two or two and three on the other let me explain what I mean so each of these two strips you're going to use we're going to use say two of these which we'll flip over so we can see the side we're going to use and we're going to use three of them on this strip okay and then on this strip for this paper we're going to use two of those and these three are going to be on this one. Let me show you how we're going to do it, okay? We're going to start with the ones that we have three squares of. We're going to put some adhesive on the back. I just put two kind of generous strips. And then we're going to turn this so that it's the points are vertical. The best way I have found to do that is to use a zero centering ruler or even to use two zero centering rulers if you have two of them. But it is helpful to be able to line your paper up and then be able to set that tip right in the middle and the tip of your paper at one and a quarter. So does that make sense? This tip gets centered down here at one and a quarter and this tip, uh, this point gets centered at one and a quarter on your ruler. Okay, and when you do that, then it will be lined up and ready to go. So we're gonna do the bottom and we're gonna do the top. Okay, so same thing. We're going to put the top point at one and a quarter inches. We're going to put the side point at one and a quarter inches. 
and then the other points are level. Okay, then we're going to take the third one and the third one we're going to place right in the center so that's where the zero centering ruler comes in because this side point then becomes pointing right off of zero and if you already have if you're using a mat like I'm using a mat then you simply line up the other point and of course mine is off just a little bit but let me grab this so that I can move it so you're going to sorry let me just get that line back up again find the zero point which is right here and line up both sides of the core of the diamond or the square both points on the square on that same line and then it will be level okay then you're going to take your other two add some adhesive to them I got a little quite crazy with my adhesive okay then when you place these on really all you're doing is lining up the tips and you'll notice that the tip of each of these squares is going to overlap by just the slightest amount just a tiny tiny bit you're going to end up overlapping on the on the top and the bottom Okay. Now it, you don't have to really worry too much about the center. Um, I just point that out to you so that it helps you keep your squares level. Okay. Then the next thing you're going to do is take your a row of your soldiers, put some repositionable adhesive on them, and they are going to sit right in the middle of. right down the center of your um, of that border right down the center of your diamonds your squares okay now um, this plaid is not showing up as well as I might have liked I think I might have changed the the candy cane paper to to use something maybe a little bit more obviously different but it'll work and we're gonna make a matching one to go on the other side and I'll speed that up so that you don't have to watch me do every step of that unless you just want to that we've got that now we can get our base sheets and assemble the rest all right so we're going to I'm gonna add this border up the outer edge So this is going up the right side of this paper. Outside edge. Then I'm going to take one of these pieces, the large nine and a half by, what was it? It was nine and a half by four and a half inch pieces. And these are going to be right in the center. So again, working on a grid is going to help you because you can then tell very easily where the middle is. So here is our six inch mark right in the center. 
And then I've got two and a quarter inches on either side that my paper will cover. And it lines up with my border over here. Okay, so there's one side. And then we'll do the other. So there's that. Now we're going to just add this piece and we are nearly done. We'll get to embellish before you know it. Now this piece you can either line up on your grid and find the center mark like we did before or you can line up your other piece um, that we've already done and make sure it matches whichever makes you happy but if you are centering it correctly then they for sure will match so no problem okay so here we go with our here's our two pages and then we can find let me grab the stickers that go with this collection and we'll see what we can come up with for embellishments. <clears throat> All right, so this collection has some really great stickers. I really like them a lot. We are not gonna need the 12 inch ones for this, for the purposes of what we're doing just now so I'm gonna just set that over here our sample our example that they gave us uses this really cute Christmas tree as a focal point um, with some words for a title and they place that right here which would be just fine if you would like to do that we're gonna use our mats that we made and um, those are gonna go here and then we can add embellishments in this corner right here over in this corner right here it's this is designed so that you can add vertical photos how many of you take a lot of vertical photos because you're using your phones so this layout is perfect for that because you can put four vertical photos on this layout and get a total of six pictures on this two page spread which is pretty good these are full size photos so six is a good number um, on two pages so if you're going to do that then you can also add some embellishing down here if you want to or possibly here between these two photos I'm not going to add that embellishment on today because without knowing what I'm going to put here yet because um, we haven't had our holidays yet right um, I'm just going to hold off on doing those embellishments, but I'm going to do something up here and up here, and I'm going to go ahead and anchor these mats down so that, um, in fact, I'm just going to do it with repositionable adhesive for right now so that um, I do have, still have that flexibility of being able to move it if I want, but um, I probably won't. I'll probably just... Go ahead and put a horizontal photo in there. So I want I just want to make sure that these mats are in the same places so that they mirror each other a bit. So even though they are just on here temporarily, I'm gonna just line up my pages and stick those on carefully. That way when I put my embellishments on, they'll be in the right place. Um, 
And I do like the Christmas tree. We could use the Christmas tree for sure. I also like the door up here. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I can't decide, I can't decide. I also like the express mailbox to Santa. <laughs> <laughs> which is super super cute um, or our we could do an army of nutcrackers lined up on top of the mantle how about if we do that in one of the spots where could we do that maybe here but if we go ahead and I'll add, I think I used this sticker on the other sample that I did too. So I'll let you see how I, how I did that. Because I had another sticker pack um, of this that I went ahead and opened. I'm a sucker for um, Christmas stockings. I don't know if I told you this last year, but I, um, I cross-stitched all of my family's Christmas stockings. So everybody's got their own, and, um, and it's all, they're all unique designs. When I went to assemble them together, I guess I wasn't paying attention because my stocking is bent in the opposite direction from everyone else in the family. <laughs> I'm the only one that has mine going essentially not the wrong way but I guess the wrong way <laughs> because everyone else is headed in a totally different direction anyways alright so we've got our stockings kind of hanging on the wall there and we've got this like virtual army of nutcrackers that can be hanging out as well and I'm just gonna put these flat because they really are tiny and adding a foam square to these yes you could do it but I I don't think I'm just wanting to stress about it right now so we're just gonna add three like they're sitting up there on the mantle And on the other side, hmm, on the other side, maybe we should just do some presents. And we'll just say happy holidays. How's that? So we'll do presents. Those presents and these presents. So these larger presents, you do have to kind of pop the inside of the bow out. On just the red one. So no worries there. Okay, so we're going to have the presents sitting. I'm going to put the presents sitting kind of on the mantle as well, if, if we were to look at that like it's a mantle. And then we'll have these presents just kind of off to the side, and we'll pop these up with a foam square or two. I have stickers on these fingers, so that's why they're sticking out. They're funny. Here, let me see if I can get them to come off. There's these little tiny bits from the bow, and they're going to just pop up in some crazy place. So there's that, and then we'll use Happy Holidays and pop that up also. Let's 
Let's see, let me use two smaller ones. Okay. Well, so as I said before, another embellishment would need to go down here. Uh, another cluster would need to go down here at the bottom somewhere, but until I know for sure which pictures I'm putting on here, I'm not going to worry about which um, embellishment's going to go there. So this is as done as I can make it for right now, and I'm just going to hold off on the other until I um, know which photos are going to go there. I think I like it. I think. I think this might be a little bit too much red as I mentioned earlier, so just keep that in mind if you are making your own. Let me show you the sample of the one I made the other day. This is made with um, using the Totally Tonal Christmas papers, so that's why they're, it's all plaid pretty much um, because that entire mini paper pack is plaids. And so I used the red, almost gingham-like plaid as a base, and then because it was tone on tone, and then this green plaid was tone on tone, and then we've got the mixture of green and red and white here, and then a darker green and red plaid um, as well. And then the white, and so having them be in white helps them stand out, having them be in red helps them stand out. It just depends on what you have in the in um, your background for Mr. Nutcracker. Embellishments up here came from a past collection. I believe it was um, Joy to the World, but it might have been a different one. And I'm sorry, I'm drawing a total blank. Um, so if you remember where those embellishments came from, maybe you could put that in the comments and help us out. That would be great. All right. So thanks so much for joining me. I'll have a picture of this as well as a picture of this um, version so that you can see both of those at the end of the video. And, um, and pause and look at them more if you want to. All right. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'm so excited to start the holidays with you. I'm going to do my 12 layouts for Christmas, so keep staying, you know, continue to stay tuned and look for my videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, from here on and out, from here on and out, from here until the end of the year, um, we will do Christmas. So I look forward to meeting with you each time and sharing a new Christmas layout with you. Hopefully we will get your, all of your holiday photos squared away. All right. Um, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Until then, I hope you have many more creative moments. Have a great day.